Now, ladies and gentlemen, do not adjust your set. I am Hitman Kaz, and this is your official review for WrestleMania Backlash. Man, oh, this was this this event was a little something with a little something else. Jesus. Um. Wow. Oh my God. Um. Some I I, I mean I I'm trying to find my word find the words because some because quite a uh, some some things in this match was just so uh, I'm I mean in the in this event just like was just, just so out there but but without wasting any time let's get down to um I I did not watch the the free show I hardly do you know I. Uh, I I hardly give a rat's ass about, about the pre-show. I just treat it as as you know the pre-show panel flapping their lip uh, about about the uh, about about the, about the upcoming pay-per-view, and then wa- and then just watching um, all the match trailers that that I'm still gonna see throughout the pay-per-view anyways. But any. But in any case, they did have a pre-show match. Sheamus faced Ricochet in a non-title match, might I add. Uh, and Sheamus won. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's quite fitting for Ricochet to uh, to be on the pre-show, considering the fact that he hardly gets any screen time lately. And it's a shame for 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 a wrestler as as good as he is, but the but the biggest crutch, like the biggest Achilles heel of of Ricochet, and I think both myself and the humble man, and even post nineties, have, have even said something about this. Um, is that is that his biggest his biggest crutch his Achilles heel is that his mic skills aren't aren't as good aren't as good as they should be like like if he would either one improve his mic skills or two get somebody that has good mic skills to speak for him then he then he then he could definitely go farther like like back in his days in Lucha Underground when he was Prince Puma freaking he had someone speak for him. You know what I'm saying, but I digress. Moving on to what to the stuff I did see, we had uh, Rhea Ripley defending the Raw Women's Title against Oscar and Charlotte Flair. Um, that this this match went about went about as good as you'd ex- as you'd expect. You know, ever. All three brought brought their A game. I especially like the sequence when freaking e, when uh, Charlotte went for a, went for a kick, but 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 missed. Then Oscar went for a kick and missed. Then Rhea went for a kick and missed. And then and then finally one of them hit. But not a nice. Actually, no, 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 freaking. Uh, and uh, Oscar went went for the went for another kick, but but um Charlotte caught her foot. And then the ending, and then of course Charlotte had had to hit her moonsault. Look here, I have no problem with her doing a moonsault because she does it because she does a good moonsault. My problem is that is that unless she put unless she puts her arms out and she does it every time, like just look at every time she's she's done it. She unless, unless she puts her arms out, she does not hit anybody. Like it makes no sense for her to hit this moonsault on standing opponents if they if she has to freaking put her arms out just for just to hit something. Like like just do it on grounded opponents, and it, and it'll and it'll look better. You know, then, then, um, and then in the closing moments of the match, 
Uh, actually, there was another spot where Charlotte hit, hit, hit a double natural selection on Rhea Ripley and Asuka at the same time. But I couldn't help but notice that her hand slipped when, do, when doing it to Asuka. But, you know, it, it, can't, be, it can't be perfect. Then, then, actually, I thought at one point she was going to do a double figure eight to both um, Rhea Ripley and Asuka, but no, nah, that, didn't, that, that didn't happen. Um, close moments on the match, freaking she. Um, to, um, uh, what's his face? Rhea Ripley tried to go for the Riptide, but... Asuka countered, tried to uh, tried to go for the Asuka lock, but but um but but Rhea countered out. Uh um and then then Charlotte ca came in, hit hit Rhea hit Rhea with a clothesline, then tr then but, but then she got then she was about to get put into the Asuka lock, then. Then, um, then, then, she, then, uh, Charlotte countered out, and then move, and then sidestep so that, um, Oscar could, could get hit by Rhea Ripley, so then she tried one more time to, to catch her, but only for Oscar to, to put it, to, to, don't, to try and put in the Oscar lock again, but then I, that got broken up by by Ray Ripley, who who made them collide into each other, and Charlotte Flair got knocked out the ring long enough for Ray Ripley to hit the Riptide to re, to regain her title. Uh, the that whole fast pace, um, uh, uh sequence was great. And a perfect way for Ripley to retain the title. I especially liked after the match where where Charlotte was just seething with rage. Like just seething. And and Rhea Ripley was was just mocking her, making fun of her, just straight up rubbing it in her face. You know? It's all too good. All too good, man. Moving on, we had Dominic and Rey Mysterio challenge the Dirty Dogs, Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Now, now, little little heads up, but uh, uh, before the event, um, the Dirty Dogs decide to once again bully Dominic. You know. First they first they first they they buck they bucked at him to make him flinch twice before um before Bobby Roode headbutted him and then they proceeded to beat the crap out of him and before jumping before throwing this what looked to be a giant pillar on him and then once they were in the trainer's office um the trainer basically said it was a no go for Dominic. And and Ray also also told them uh, also told them no. So the he so Ray essentially went it alone. And he 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 did about as as good as he could do it for as long as he can he, he can do it, holding his own against both uh, both both Rude and Ziggler. And hell, he he even had it at one point, but but. But they fi but they finally got but they but they finally got the best of them to the point of no return when they um uh what's his face they, when they trapped him in the tree of woe because when they put him in the tree of woe he he messed up his knee storyline I'm pretty sure um but yeah the oh once his knee was messed up. It was game over, so you know the, at, at that at that point, you know they knew it was a matter of time. So they were trying to, to do everything they could to put him away. Nothing worked, 
Um, he he eventually did gain enough separation, just barely, but he was still hurting. Then uh, then Dominic actually came down, and he stood on the apron wanting to tag, but Ray was hesitant, didn't want to tag him. So then, Rudin Ziggler proceeded to continue to beat down Ray until eventually he got close enough to Dominic where where he was still hesitant. He still didn't want to tag him in, but but then one but then um Ray got knocked into the corner. So then Dominic tagged himself in, and he was and he was able to while still selling. His injury, he 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 had he he had storyline injured ribs. Um, he was he, he was he still managed to um try and put in as much work as he as he could, you know, showing showing that he showing that he had the heart of a warrior, but but uh quickly, um, Rudin Ziggler did get the best of him. Ray eventually got on the apron, and um, and Dominic just barely managed to create enough separation over Ziggler to make the tag. Ray got in, did a little bit of flurry, but he was, but he got stopped quickly by by a backbreaker from Rude. Um, but but that didn't last long. He he eventually. Um, hit, hit, hit Rude with with the six one nine, tagged in Dominic, hit, hit a hit a hit a hit a pretty sweet looking, I guess you could say mini sunset flip power bomb, cause he slid, cause he 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 ran down, cause, cause he he ran. And then slid under the ring, and then hit the sunset flip power bomb on Dolph Ziggler to take him out of the match, which then left um, sit, uh, Rude by himself with Dominic, who hit the frog splash. Pretty, pretty decent, pretty decent looking frog frog splash, I might say. Connected to win the match and win the titles for the Mysterios, making them the first father son team. To be SmackDown Tag Team Champions, I was very pleased with this. You know what I'm saying? Finally, the Dirty Dogs have been taken down, but I'm more happy with the with the Mysterios and the job that they did. You know what I'm saying? Securing the dub, the the despite being hurt, and it definitely. And it definitely showed, you know, how how much of a threat they were. If you know, if Rudin Ziggler had to resort to such tactics, you know. But moving on, we had. Oh my god, I've been waiting. I, I've been waiting to talk about this match. Yeah, Damian Priest versus The Miz in a lumberjack match, because this match. It was a it was a straight up gimmick match, uh, like a gimmick promotion match, cause for one thing, they were uh, they they br- they brought up. Well, actually, first off, let me backtrack. Um, John Morrison and The Miz were, were were just talking backstage, and John basically said that that he had had everything under control, to which he didn't. Shocker, shocker. Um, and turns out the lumberjacks were zombies, and this was to promote Batista, um, being in this movie Army of the Dead, because they, because the commentators brought up a tweet saying where he basically, where he, where he basically couldn't, where he, he was apologizing for not making it to the show. But saying that he uh, that he brought some that that some of his friends were, were able to make it for him, and his friends being the zombies. And first off, let me give uh, let me give some flowers to Pat McAfee because this dude he he actually brought up ECW. I'm not talking about the original ECW. I'm talking about 
WWE's ECW, he actually made a reference to to the to the first episode of ECW when freaking uh what's his face when 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 to start when to start off their first match, um there was a zombie there. If y'all remember that face, Sandman. He 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 really brought that up. <laughs> Kudos to him. But yeah. The, so yeah, the zombies were surrounding the ring. You know what I'm saying? Fast forward to the match. The zombies were surrounding the ring, scaring the shit out of Miz Morrison and and sort of freaked out um Damian Priest. And you know, they're 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 trying to go through the match as best as they can. Um and every time every time that they they, they get up the ring mainly Miz, freaking the zombies try try to get them so they immediately run back into the ring but eventually Damien Priest has enough and 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 once he got up the ring one time he started swinging on him and then at one point Miz got got out the ring he he, he hit a few himself but then towards the end of the match John Moore John Morrison actually came back because um when the match first started, this was funny as shit. He actually he dipped out, and then also the commentators dipped out as well because because uh, a zombie popped out from from underneath the uh, the announce table. <laughs> oh man! So then they were they were recording the match from from a from a different location. Um. So yeah. But anyways, um, John John Morrison came back, decided to. Throw a little parkour and capoeira into the mix. Freaking catching first one catching Damian Priest with a capoeira kick while the ref wasn't looking. Um, then two, he he was using his ex I wouldn't yeah his expert parkour skills uh, along with his capoeira to to one avoid the zombies and then and then to to knock a few of them down. But he fucked up because he stood up on the apron. I mean, stood up on the barricade, uh, uh, clearly looking to try and a attack the zombies below. When a couple of zombies that were behind the barricade popped up from behind them, grabbed them, and pulled them down. This, in turn, distracted the Miz and, and allowed Damian Priest to get hit, to hit him with hit the lights, and 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 that was it. And then after the match, freaking. The zombies got in the ring, which 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 made Damian Priest hop up on on the top on the top turnbuckle to get out of there and make haste, while the zombies devoured a Miz. This, wow, my God, this match was. It, I think, yeah, freaking everything, but the match had my attention like like the zombies had my attention more than anything else and and just them trying to work around them and whatnot <laughs> and that, that that was a that was a show within a show not not, not complaining just saying next up we had Bay, uh, Bailey challenge Bianca Belair for the Smackdown women's title Oh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Very, good. uh, pretty, de pretty decent match. You know what I'm saying? Ba Bailey, you know, uh, <laughs> had the nerve to to um put uh the words "bell loser" in in the back of her head. Like apparently, th this is a certain trend for her to to car to to part the names of of her opponents in the back of her, uh, of her head. You know, ever since she cut her hair, um, it it did not do her any good because you know, despite her best efforts, Bianca Belair proves why she is the EST, overcoming the odds, and. And beating, and beating Bailey to retain her title. 
Moving on, where we had Bobby Lashley defend the WWE title against Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. This, this match, you know what I'm saying, once, and needless to say, del delivered pretty good, you know. Um, from, uh, I'll admit, but when coming to the arena, freaking MVP and Lashley did to say we're looking fresh as shit, man. And they were looking, they were look, they were looking fresh to death. But <laughs> I expect nothing less of them, you know. But I'll, but I'll admit, you know, that there were, there were multiple times where I thought Lashley was gonna lose the title, and in the scariest ways. By you know not even being a part of the decision, but he did it. He did his thing, and over, and 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 retain the, and retain the title. Finally, we have the main event: Roman Reigns defending the Universal Title against Cesaro. Oh man, this match! This match really, ha really had me at the edge of my seat, man. Cause. I uh, this had me convinced that well multiple times that that Cesaro could have had it, but one of the biggest one of the biggest things was that um, for a majority of the match Roman Reigns was um, was was wrenching Cesaro's arm, effectively you know trying to take away his um, <laughs> his power game, which is a big part of his arsenal, um, to which to a degree it worked, but but Cesaro just kept fighting, kept fighting, kept fighting. There was there was a great spot I liked where Cesaro tried to hit his uh, springboard uh, European uppercut, but when he when he jumped off to try and hit it, Roman hit him with a Superman punch. Uh, very good timing by both of them, man. Great work. Um, then, um, towards towards the end, uh, Roman uh, put in uh, put in the the guillotine, but Cesaro countered, being uh, just barely managing to lift him up to to break him out of it, and then he tried to pin him. Roman kicked out. But then he put him in the sharpshooter, and then Rowan eventually w w was getting close to the ropes. But uh, but then at one point, once he was cl once he got close enough, well, without touching him, Cesaro quickly uh, used his technical prowess to switch to switch submission holds, put him in the crossface. And then he shifted his weight to, to to put Roman back in the middle of the ring, but Roman um, shifted his weight to to, to ground and pound um, uh, Cesaro. Um, man. And then and then after that. He he, he put and he put him in the guillotine choke, and despite his best efforts, Cesaro passed out, and Roman retained. Uh, once again, I was given hope by by an opponent of of Roman's, but Roman shatters that hope, and and retains the match. And retains the title. Um, then after the match, main event Jey Uso came down with a with the same lay that 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 the Wild Samoans gave him uh, after he beat Jey Uso, and he put it around Roman's neck. Then he was axing Roman. Let, let me get him. Let me get him. Roman, fi Roman finally gave him the okay, so then he proceeded to beat down Cesaro a bit more. Then he, then he was about to hit the 
um, the Uso splash on him. However, Seth Rollins' music hit, and at first he stared down Roman, but then he gave him a big smile, and then proceeded to beat the crap out of, out of Cesaro, which, which pretty much was what well, was Roman, Jey Uso, and Paul Heyman's cue to leave, to which they did. And then during and then during the beatdown, he basically made mincemeat of Cesaro's arm. Rickin dis Rickin <laughs> destroy destroying that shit, putting it through a chair, and so there was nothing left. Uh, honestly, mainly because the wrestling room was. I th I thought this was this is where um, Seth Rollins was gonna turn face. Boy, was I off. <laughs> Oh man, but you know, overall, pretty decent, pay pretty decent pay per view. You know, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not mad at all at at this. You know, pretty pretty much every one of my predictions came true except for the last one. So you know, um, I'm I'm very satisfied. You know, and and. First and before I end this off, let me go back to Damian Priest and the Miz. I don't know. Uh, the, the, I think they, I think they might have heard myself and the humble man Gary when we gave our predictions about the match and whatnot, because because they made the match interesting. The zombies made the match worth watching. They made it interesting, you know. I guess all that talk about about how we weren't interested in, in the match much, and we wanted them to move on, uh, made them want to do that. <laughs> oh man, but eh, that's gonna do it for the, for this review. You know, I definitely want to thank each and every one of y'all for taking the time out of your busy schedule for coming chilling with me. If you enjoyed this ma if you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit the like button, comment if you feel like it. Um, subscribe to my channel and and hit the notification bell so you never miss an upcoming video. And share and share it to, to everyone you know. And until next time, by way of Struggle Vision Productions, I am the Hitman Cause, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.